This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. This is uh, question one from the June 2009 paper F5 exam, YAM. Uh, and so make sure you've got the question in front of you, uh, either from a revision kit or by downloading it from the ACCA website. OK, before we start reading the detail, um, let's look at the requirements. Part A, identify the bottleneck process and briefly explain why the process is described as a bottleneck. B, calculate the throughput accounting ratio for each product, assuming that the bottleneck process is fully utilised. I won't bother reading C for the moment, but immediately we know uh, that the question is about throughput accounting. So, uh, part A says identify the bottleneck process. Let's go back to the um, um, text of the question and let's have a quick read. Yanko is involved in the processing of sheet metal into products A, B and C using three processes, pressing, stretching and rolling. Like many businesses, Yam faces tough price competition in what is a mature world market. Uh, the 50 production lines, each of which contain the three processes, raw material for the sheet metal is pressed, then stretched and rolled. So three processes uh, in this factory. The processing capacity varies for each process and the factory managers provided the following data. Now the data we're given there, for each of the three processes, pressing, stretching and rolling, we're told what the processing time is per metre in hours for each of the three products. Now remember, for part A, our job is to identify the bottleneck process and the bottleneck process, that's the name we give to the process that's slowing us down. And surely, uh, whichever process uh, is taking the longest for each product is the one that's delaying everything else. So to make it clear, if you look at product A, product A spends 0.5 hours in pressing, but only 0.25 hours, 0.4 hours in stretching and rolling. So it's spending the longest time in pressing. If it wasn't for the pressing department, uh, we'd be able to produce a lot more. Uh, but with limited time available, it's the pressing that's slowing us down. And the same for product B, the same for product C. In each case, uh, it's pressing where it's taking the longest time. And so the answer to part A it says, first of all, identify the bottleneck process. Well, we've done that. The bottleneck process. Is pressing. No, though, it also says briefly explain why it's described as a bottleneck. Well, the reason it's described as a bottleneck Because it's the time spent in this process is what is limiting limiting, I'm sorry at uh, the level of production. So that's a relatively easy three marks. More importantly, let's go on to part B. Part B says calculate the throughput accounting ratio for each product. Now this bit is uh, pure learning. Uh, hopefully um, you, you know the definition of throughput accounting ratio, but let's use this um, to effectively revise it. Um, what we need to do is, first of all, oh, oh, sorry, start again. Remember that one 
The one huge assumption we make with throughput accounting, and I would actually write it down because this alone would get you a mark, is with throughput we assume that all costs except materials are fixed. Now I'm not going to try and have a full lecture here. If, if necessary, go and listen to the lecture elsewhere on the website. But with throughput, we assume all costs except materials are fixed. Or, if you prefer, uh, the only variable cost is materials. So what we need to do, first of all, is for each of the three products, A, B and C, let's work out effectively the contribution, or the new name for it, the throughput. Uh, and so per unit, the selling price A has a selling price, uh, where is it? Up, 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 up. The last paragraph. The selling price is per meter, $70 for A, $60 for B, and 27 for C. Subtract the variable costs, well the only variable cost with throughput is materials. Uh, and again, in that uh, last paragraph, the raw materials cost per meter, it's $3 uh, for A, $2.50 for B, and $1.80 for C. And so, effectively, the contribution, or we call it the throughput, uh, A, $67 a unit, so this is per unit, B, $57.50, uh, and C, uh, $25.20. To effectively choose between them, uh, we need to work out uh, the throughput per hour, because always it's factory time that's going to be limited. And so how many hours does each one spend in the bottleneck process? Remember, it's pressing that's the problem, because that's where we're spending the longest time. Um, the other two um, uh, processes uh, aren't limiting. So the hours per unit in pressing from the top table, A spends 0.5 hours per meter, B 0.5 and C 0.4. And so, the throughput per hour, or the return per factory hour. Let's simply divide. So, sure, the working's for one, just then it's clear you know what you're doing. Uh, but for A, it's $67, it's 0.5 hours. And so, the return per hour is how much? Um, bum, 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 134. Similarly, B, 57.50 divided by 0.5 is, I better use my calculator here, 115 per hour. Uh, and finally, C, 25.20.4 hours. At $63. And so, although we're not asked for here, in fact, A um, is the best product, the best return per hour, uh, B is second best, C is third best. However, for the throughput accounting ratio, we also need to know the cost per factory hour. And the definition of this and write it down, because even if something goes uh, wrong with the numbers, you'll get credit for it. To get the cost per factory hour, it's the total fixed costs divided by the limited hours. Now here be careful. 
Look back at the question, what are the fixed costs? Again, if you look at the third paragraph, the raw materials cost per meter we've dealt with other factory costs, excluding labour and raw materials, at 18 million. However, that excludes labour and raw materials. And remember, for throughput accounting, I said at the beginning that we assume all costs except materials are fixed. So it's not just conventional fixed costs, but anything else as well, apart from materials. So labour, in throughput accounting, the total labour cost is regarded as fixed. So, how much is the labour cost? Look at the paragraph below the table. The factory operates for 18 hours a day, for five days a week. It's closed for only two weeks of the year for holidays when maintenance is carried out. On average, one hour of labour is needed for each of the 225,000 hours of labour time. Labour is paid $10 an hour. Now, one thing that did confuse people, and maybe confusing you, is the examiner actually gave more information than you needed. Because it's only the last bit we actually need. I will check it in a moment. But it says there are 225,000 hours of factory time. Each hour needs an hour of labour. And labour is $10. So surely the labour bit, 225,000 hours, $10 an hour, is 2.25 million Now, I will come back in one moment, in that although it's not really necessary, how it fits in with the rest of the information. However, that would be the total fixed cost, divide by the limited hours. Well, how many hours of factory time are there? It's 225,000. And so the cost per factory hour, 20.25 million, divided by 225,000, it comes to $90. Now, before I go any further, I will sort out one little problem here. The examiner was a tiny bit confusing, because although he said there was 225,000 hours of factory time, he's told us how many hours a day the factory works, and how many days a week, and so on. But in fact, he didn't need to, because how much factory time is there? The start of the second paragraph tells us with 50 production lines. And so each of them are working, obviously. Um, the factory is open 18 hours a day. Uh, we're working five days a week. And... We closed for only two weeks of the year. Well, with 52 weeks a year, we're working for 50 weeks. And so how many factory hours are there in total? 50 lines, 18 hours a day, five days a week, 50 weeks, 225,000. Now, in fact, we don't, we don't need that. We were given 225,000. So I think it was just a tiny bit uh, unfair of the examiner to give the extra information. It just risks being confusing, particularly if you haven't spotted that there were 50 production lines. However, now we can work out the throughput accounting ratio because the definition of it, and write it down in the exam, because again, even if the numbers have gone wrong, you'll get credit for knowing what you were supposed to be doing it's defined as being the return per factory hour which we calculated earlier divided by the cost per factory hour and so let's do it first of all for A 
product A, the return per hour, 134, the cost per factory hour, 90, and so for product A, at 1.49. Similarly, product B, return 115, cost per hour 90, is 1.28. And finally, product C, 63, divided by 90, is 0.7. And there we are. Uh, part C itself doesn't ask you to comment uh, on the throughput accounting ratio, so although you should know how to interpret them, for part B it's irrelevant. It simply says calculate the throughput accounting ratio for each product, and there we are. However, we're not there yet, because appreciate so far, we've only got 11 marks out of 20, which OK is passing, but it only needs one tiny error somewhere uh, to be failing. And so we need to make a proper attempt at part C. Part C says, assuming that the throughput accounting ratio of product C is less than 1. Well, ours is less than 1, but even if we were wrong, here he's helping us. Assuming it is less than 1, firstly explain how we could improve it. Four marks. How could we go about getting a higher uh, throughput accounting ratio? Well, to improve the ratio, Well, there are four things we could consider, which fits in with four marks, and I think each of them should be very obvious. How could we get a bigger ratio? Well, one way, of course, would be to get a bigger return per factory hour. If we could increase the return, automatically we increase the ratio. And how could we do that? We could do that by increasing the throughput. And how do we do that? By having a higher selling price or reduce the cost of materials. So there immediately are two uh, ways of improving it. Um, increase the selling price. Again, higher selling price, higher throughput, higher throughput ratio. However, uh, I think you should write slightly more than that. Um, you may have noticed earlier in um, the first paragraph, the last sentence, it says, like many businesses, YAM faces tough price competition. And so there's the danger uh, that if there's a lot of price competition, we may not be able to increase the selling price. And so extend it slightly, um, subject to... Uh, the level of competition. How else could we do it? Well, I said a moment ago, the other way of increasing the throughput um, is try to reduce material costs. Uh, and again, although you may get the full mark just for that, I think try and extend it. How might you reduce material costs? Well, just one example. Um, ask for discounts from suppliers. OK, well, both of those would increase uh, the throughput and hence the ratio. Uh, how else could we do it, though? If we couldn't increase the throughput, the 63... Uh, sorry, the return per hour, beg your pardon, the 63. The other thing to look at is, could we reduce the cost? Well, the cost per hour depends on the uh, fixed costs. 
So, attempt to reduce the fixed costs. Again, lower fixed costs, a lower cost per hour, and therefore higher ratio. Uh, and it's worth making the point here that fixed costs could be all sorts of things, but one thing specifically has been included is labour. We assume labour is a fixed cost for throughput. And so, especially um, the labour rate of pay. Finally, there is a fourth way we could attempt to improve the ratio, and in some ways the most obvious of all, and that would be getting the bottleneck process, the pressing, to work faster. Because if we spent less hours in pressing, surely the fewer hours, uh, I beg your pardon, I don't mean spend less hours in total, but the fewer hours each meter took in pressing, the more units we'd be capable of producing. And so the fourth thing to consider is to try and speed up the bottleneck process. In this case, uh, it is pressing. Because again, without going back to the arithmetic, if we spent less time, if each uh, product spent less time, uh, then the return per factory hour would be higher. So I think that's enough there for four marks. Finally, see part two. Briefly discuss whether this supports the suggestion to cease the production of product C and briefly outline three other factors that we should consider before a cessation decision is taken. So it's two separate bits here. Does it support the suggestion that we should cease product C? Secondly, three other factors we should consider before we decide to stop. Well, in one sense, it does support it, because remember that here, if the T throughput accounting ratio is less than 1, it means that product C in this case is generating a, low, a return lower uh, than the cost of operating the factory. But, uh, how much does it cost? It's costing us $90 an hour to run the factory, the fixed costs, and C is only generating $63 an hour. And so what I've written is factually true. The return is lower than the cost of operating the factory, and always if the throughput ratio is less than one. And therefore, consideration should be given to ceasing production. if ways cannot be found of increasing it. Now note, I haven't said we should cease. There are several other factors, which is what the rest of this question is about. But certainly, it does support the fact that we should consider ceasing production. Uh, and that's enough for that bit. However, the reason we need to consider other factors
Note he wants three other factors. So any three sensible ones will do. I'll mention what I think are perhaps the three most obvious. Probably the most obvious one is this. That if we do stop um, producing C, then subject to other things, we lose um, the throughput. We lose the $25.20 we're getting from each unit. And it's only worth losing that if we're going to save some of the fixed costs. Because if the fixed costs remain at 20.25 million, and stopping one product doesn't reduce them, then we're actually going to lose out. And so that's a hugely important fact we need to consider, um, that if we cease, do we save any fixed costs? And the reason is because ceasing will lose the contribution or throughput from C. Uh, a second factor is that the factory's got 225,000 hours of factory time. At the moment, some of that time is going to be spent making C, presumably. But if we don't make C, how else could we use the time? Um, if we are able to produce and sell more A's and B's, then that would be great. But if, if we can't sell more, then, again, we're going to be losing contribution. And so, uh, what... Oh, sorry, start again. How... Could the factory time saved by not producing C be otherwise used? Uh, for example, can we produce and sell? more of A and or B. Because certainly, if we could produce more of A and or B, then they are more profitable. Uh, and then it certainly would be a good idea to perhaps stop making C. He wanted three points. A final point I'd make is we don't know precisely what these products are and it could be the case that there is some sort of interrelationship and that if we did stop uh, producing C, if we couldn't sell C, maybe we'd end up losing sales of A and B uh, as well. So it need to be considered. And so the third factor, is there any relationship between sales of C and other products. And just in case there was any uh, chance of the marker misunderstanding me, um, let me make it clear what I mean. Um, that maybe if customers cannot buy C, we might lose sales of other products as well. And there we are. I've got three points. Uh, and I am confident that I've written enough uh, to get full marks there. And so, there we are.